the verdict from the local body elections in Sri Lanka was a mixed bag for the ruling United People's Freedom Alliance and Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajapakse. While the ruling coalition has had landslide victories in the local bodies elsewhere, it had to face comprehensive defeat at the hands of the Tamil National Alliance in the Tamil-dominated and war-ravaged Northern Province. We have with us Ahilan Kadir Kamar, spokesperson of the Sri Lanka Democracy Forum, with whom we shall discuss the election results and other issues related to the long-awaited political solution to the conflict in the country. Ahilan, welcome to News Click. Uh, Ahilan, you have been to Jaffna recently during the local body elections. You must have seen the war affected Tamil people's mood from close quarters. What do you think were the reasons why the Tamil people voted for the TNA in such large numbers? Uh, yes, now this is the first of all uh, the second uh, set of local government elections uh, in Sri Lanka. We had local government elections in uh, March for close to uh, 234 bodies. And then this time in July we had local government elections for 65 bodies. So at one level um, these were not supposed to be uh, elections of uh, great importance. These were mainly to determine uh, local uh, authorities in many of these uh, villages and towns. Now the government uh, decided to uh, raise the stakes on these uh, elections because um, of the mounting uh, political pressures internationally. Um, in, in that context, there was uh, some amount of intimidation uh, leading up to the uh, elections. And um, from, I think, the, the Tamil community's point of view in particular, uh, where in, in the north, in, in the Jaffna Peninsula and the, and the Vanni, where uh, there were elections for close to uh, 20 local government uh, bodies, issues of uh, resettlement, the absence of a political solution, and the continued uh, militarization of the North uh, were issues that had been raised. Now, the, the government uh, attempted to make this election uh, a question of economic development versus political settlement and wartime accountability. They felt uh, that enough had been done uh, on the economic development front and through a larger campaign they thought they could send a message to the rest of the country and, and the world at large that the Tamil community was with them. Um, so in that context, a uh, number of ministers and the president himself uh, campaigned for this uh, local government uh, election in the north. And um, the, the verdict of the elections, as you know, uh, is that in the Jaffna Peninsula and uh, the four uh, councils that were being elected in Kilnochi and Mulatibu, uh, out of a total of 20, uh, the government's uh, uh, partner and member of its coalition, EPDP, only won three of the uh, local government councils. And the TNA uh, won a large majority of them. And even uh, Anand Sangari, who was a very vocal critic of the LTT, um, managed to win two in Kilnochi. So this is... Uh, was a, a resounding uh, defeat of the, the government's agenda in the north. Now, on election day, it was very clear that people wanted to send a strong message to the government. Uh, they are, I think, very tired of the way in which uh, politics is being uh, manipulated, that a certain southern agenda is being pushed. And, of course, the problem is that intimidation continues. Just uh, uh, today in the newspapers and uh, news has come out that the editor of uh, the leading Tamil newspaper in Jaffna, Udayan, uh, was beaten up very badly by two thugs with uh, iron crow bars. Now this sort of fear combined with the military presence is, is part of the reason why th there was this kind of uh, overwhelming response on the part of uh, the Tamil community. You are telling us that intimidation continues. now. Uh the, there is tremendous international pressure uh, following uh, the release of the Channel 4 uh, video uh, and of course the uh, UN Special Panel Report which we, we, we discussed upon that about that uh, last time with you. Now combined with the clear mandate from the Tamil people, uh, what implications do you think these uh, elections would have on a prospective talks between the TNA and the government? Yeah, the negotiations uh, between the, the TNA and the government had been uh, going on 
since the, the beginning of this year. And as you mentioned, uh, the UN panel report and the Channel 4 documentary have become uh, you know, very important uh, uh, interventions in, in, in the public domain on the basis of which um, some very powerful actors have uh, taken the Sri Lankan government to task. Here, uh, particularly the, the United States and the British have uh, repeatedly called for a credible process of accountability into uh, wartime abuses. And uh, the, what they have said is that unless there is uh, genuine and credible movement uh, on this accountability issue by the end of the year, that the international actors might take this up in various UN forums. On the other hand, uh, India has also uh, become uh, much more vocal. They've called for uh, a credible political settlement. They have emphasized more the political process as well as lifting the state of emergency. Um, so this uh, international pressure uh, combined with uh, the, the TNA's uh, victory in the local government elections in the north, and as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the government's uh, attempt was to deflect that kind of international pressure by hoping to have a major victory in the north, and, and having failed that, now I think the TNA is hoping to use this victory to push for more leverage on the negotiations with the government in terms of uh, political. What's the government's strategy now? Uh, there is talk of a parliamentary select committee to be uh, going to be set up. How do you evaluate these steps? Yeah, now the parliamentary uh, select committee is an idea that uh, the president floated uh, soon after the uh, joint statement between um, India and uh, Sri Lanka in I believe in, in May, coming on the heels of the UN panel report, where India had called for a credible uh, political settlement. Now, the, the worry, I think, among many analysts is that um, there have been numerous processes uh, to attempt uh, to come towards a political settlement. More recently, uh, President Rajapaksa himself had appointed a process that uh, called the All-Party Representative Committee process, which in fact went on for uh, three years. It, it, the process came to an end. Um, many of the leaders of political parties uh, um, co-signed a document, including uh, his own party, and it was uh, presented to the president in 2009, but the president has not made that report public. There was also a multi-ethnic experts committee report uh, that came at the, the very beginning of that process. So there, are, um, there have been various processes, there have been various uh, documents, and in that context, um, many worry whether this parliamentary select committee uh, is yet another uh, time-buying exercise or time-dragging exercise by the president and the, and the ruling uh, government. Now, if they are serious about this kind of a process, I think they have to do one of two things. Either uh, the president and his uh, uh, SLFP, uh, the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, should adopt the APRC uh, report and say that they are willing to start, make that the basis of uh, negotiations um, with all the other parties, or the president should very clearly come out with his uh, own proposals. Um, and here the president has uh, been very non-committal, and, and that is why there is very little confidence in uh, whether this parliamentary select committee report will um, actually uh, contribute towards arriving at a political settlement or whether it's just a time buying exercise uh, until the international pressure reduces. This is in line with the disappointment that we have had with the proclamations from the president and no action later on. Oh, there was a lot of talk about a so called 13 amendment plus uh, package as part of the political solution even before the end of the civil war. Uh, now, I mean, nothing has you know uh, concretely happened in that uh, front as of now. Do you think it is still a chimera uh, based on what the go current government is doing? That's right, yeah. The, the, the 13th Amendment, uh, which came with the uh, Indo-Sri Lanka Accord of 1987, um, for the first time moved towards devolution of powers to the provinces. Now, such uh, devolution to the provinces was a major step, but the, the kind of powers that would be devolved 
became a major uh, question over the last 20 years. Because uh, under the 13th Amendment, some powers are reserved uh, for the center, some powers are given to the provinces, and there is something called the concurrent list, which are a set of shared powers between the center and the provinces. Now the reality is that in even many of the other provincial councils, now in, in the North provincial council elections have not been held for the last uh, 20 years because of the war, but in the other provincial councils, um, whether it is in the South or the West, um, again powers were not devolved. So these provincial councils haven't worked in the way in which they were envisioned. Now there was Eastern provincial council elections in 2008, um, and there again, uh, the experience over the last three years has been that very little has been achieved uh, through that provincial council. So the kind of powers that would be devolved through the 13th Amendment becomes important. And central here, uh, also in the negotiations between the TNA and the government, is the question of police powers and land powers, whether they would be vested with the provinces. And the president has expressed... Um, uh, that he will not uh, devolve police powers and land powers. So I think that's going to become a sticking point. Now that is, you know, what is already part of our constitution in terms of uh, the 13th Amendment, that even that has not been working. But the original vision and even in uh, discussions between the Indian government and uh, the Sri Lankan government, uh, they had talked about 13th Amendment plus, more than uh, the 13th Amendment. Um, which would have uh, involved um, things like a bicameral legislature where minorities would have a greater representation. Now, when I talked about uh, the political solution, the original vision of even the APRC process and, and, and many of these other political processes was to go much further. That one problem why devolution has failed in Sri Lanka is because of the unitary structure of the state and this very centralization of power also in the executive presidency. So there was much discussion about going much further, changing of the, the, the structure of the state from unitary to a united, but uh, now very few people have hoped that uh, this president and this government would go for anything far-reaching such as that. And then uh, they felt that the compromise might be a 13th uh, amendment plus. But the reality that we see now in Sri Lanka is really 13th Amendment minus, and uh, that is a, a great worry for minorities.